Hey everyone, I just wanted to check in with you now that we're finished with Unit 1 for our Latin American History class. Um, I just finished reading through the discussion board with your questions and responses about the Chastain introduction and about the Gobat article. Um, both of them, of course, took very different approaches to thinking about Latin America. Many of you pointed out quite uh, concisely uh, what those differences were, and so I think everyone did uh, a really great job of interacting there on the discussion board and also of including specific cited evidence from uh, one or the other of the sources in your response posts. Um, excuse me, I'm just now going to finish up uh, looking over our What is History discussion on Twitter. Um, I'd already interacted with a few of you there um, a few days ago and uh, maybe yesterday as well. Uh, just talking about primary sources and secondary sources and how to best approach critical thinking. Uh, I should say historical thinking, which also is critical thinking. Um, and so I look forward to continuing our discussions there uh, about those, uh, about how to study the past, I guess I should say, as we get started thinking about Latin America and its past. Um, so hopefully, you know, at the end of Unit 1, now we've kind of talked about um, rough definitions of Latin America, some of the major issues that have faced the region, including colonialism and inequality, um, not only within the region, within the nations, but on the world stage as well. Um, and also we're thinking about how can we best uh, understand the past through multiple perspectives on any given historical moment. Hopefully all of that will serve us well as we continue our study of Latin America. As always, please don't hesitate to ask questions whenever you have them. Um, one last thing to say, um, as I look over the Twitter assignments, I noticed, or as I looked over our hashtag on Twitter, um, I noticed that not everyone has posted there, at least from what I can see. Um, so if you end up with a zero for the Unit 1 Twitter assignment, what that probably means is that I haven't seen you there yet. Um, and so what you can do is you can mention me in a tweet. It's at CNN Brandon. Um, so that I'll be able to find you there, or you can email me your Twitter handle, your username, so that I'm sure to find you and give you credit for your work. Um, as long as you use the hashtag, and all you have to do is type in the pound sign H1182, no spaces, um, that will organize all of uh, the tweets for class uh, under that same hashtag, so you just have to go to search, the Twitter search box, and look for our class hashtag um, H1182 and then you'll be able to see what everyone's posting. Um, do click on latest when you go to search for the course hashtag because if not, um, it'll show the top tweets first and I have no idea what makes something a top tweet. You wanna see them in chronological order um, so that you can see the most recent things that people have been posting uh, and so that you can interact with them for the regular Twitter assignments that will start with unit two. Um, let's see, one other thing to mention um, if you see that zero for unit one, it also could mean that you have uh, your Twitter account set to protected. And so next to your um, username, your handle, you'll see a little lock uh, icon. If that's the case, no one else can see what you post unless you invite them to do so. And for the way we're using Twitter with class, that means no one else will be able to see your posts, including me. So what you'll need to do is unprotect your tweets um, I will post a link to how to do that below this video announcement, uh, just in case anyone needs it. Um, and I think that's all we need going forward. I look forward to jumping into Unit 2 and thinking about uh, Latin American independence movements with all of you.